this slide we'll be looking uh, how we can compile loop statement uh, so let's say we have example like this uh, we have a while statement which says while save i equal to k then i would be incremented by one now how we can generate makes code for this instruction we, we just have to uh, look a uh, look into the instruction uh, carefully because instead of having some integer in the save array we have a variable we do not have uh, let's say save three we do not have like that we have save i and i is variable so we know this i's value is getting incremented every time this loop executes uh, and uh, uh, till the condition satisfies so let's see how we can execute the or how we can generate the code for uh, this uh, while statement or while uh, loop so as always we need to assign registers for this so i is assigned to s3 k is assigned to s5 and address of save is address of save means the base address of save is saved in register s6 we know where, uh, from the load instruction when we are discussing about load instruction then whenever we have an array let's say the array is a let's say array is a then whatever the element we are trying to figure out or the address of the element that we are trying to figure out we need to know the base address of this array so let's say we are trying to find the address of a3 so we need to know the base address of that uh, uh, array that is a uh, that is a in this case so if the uh, base address of a is let's say 100 then we know that we need to multi uh, we need to add 100 and then 4 because the address is incremented by 4 multiplied by our index which is 3 so in total we'll we'll have uh, if i write here if I write here, the to total value that we would get is 112. So, memory address 112 will hold array A3. This is straightforward calculation. Uh, this is only because we have the index in integer form. But if we look our example, our index is in variable form. It is not in integer form. But still, this can be possible. It is possible to generate MIPS code uh, for this kind of assignment, for uh, this variable uh, variable kind of array. Let's see how we can do it. Now, I have, uh, I have written, uh, written this example uh, just to uh, guide you through this uh, MIPS code, guide you through this MIPS code. Now, first of all, just forget about this i and assume that we have our instruction something like this our instruction is something like this save three equal to k and rest is this so how would have, how you would have, would have done that we need to and also save is in six that means the base address of save is in s6 so how can we do that uh, so our calculation would have been this straightforward 112 memory address it would be the address of s uh, save 3 but as i said that uh, instead of a uh, integer value we have some variable which is i but the operation remains the same and what is that we need to multiply the index by 4 and then add this value with our base address we have the base address in s s6 as it is uh, in, uh, given here now our job is to perform this part that is this part our job is to perform this part that is multiply the index by four so how can we do that yes this is one way uh, this is one way of doing it but since this is variable we cannot execute it in this way but what we can do we can execute sll shape left logical so s3 register s3 what s3 holds see s3 holds i so if we left shift s3 by 2 bit that means we are multiplying i by 2 uh, sorry 4 this is what 
4 multiplied by 3 because in this case I uh, save i. i is our index. Our job is to multiply this index by 4. So if we shift i by 4, uh, sorry by 2, that means this is multiplying by 4 and we are keeping the result in t1. Now what do I need to do? We already have performed this multiplication part. We, we already have performed this multiplication part. The next part is to add it with our base address. So why do where can we find this base address? Our base address is in S6. So we perform addition. S6 add with T1. And we are keeping the result a, again in T1 because this is temporary result. These are all temporary results. So we are, we are keeping the result in T1. Now we have the exact address of our i index remember i is getting incremented every time the loop executes so what do we need to do we will be storing the load value in t naught register and this is zero because we already have calculated the exact memory location of i and each time it is uh, going to be calculated. So we are keeping, uh, we are putting a zero here and we are putting the exact, exact address here. This line would give us the value of save i each time the loop executes. So this three line actually calculates the value that this array would contain so we have the value of save i now now the the part is whether they're equal to or not equal to k or not now uh, what is the trick uh, we already have discussed when we have equal then we'll start with not equal this is what uh, we did here not equal and we compare the result and then we perform this this operation we are adding one to the i which is add i instruction see add i instruction and then once we are done executing this instruction we need to ex ex exit from the loop so we just write j loop as long as the loop continues so we'll, we'll continue we'll, we'll jump to the loop when this is done then we'll execute this is how it works Basic blocks. A basic block is a sequence of instruction with no embedded branches except at the end. Uh, that means uh, that means here or no branch target except at the beginning. Here, so the rest is called the basic basic block. These are sequential codes. That means uh, once this instruction gets executed, that then this one, after this one, this one, after this one, this one, after this one, this one, and so on. So this part, this basic code can be used to accelerate the program execution and make faster execution of the program possible. More conditional operations, set result to 1 if condition is true, otherwise set to, uh, set to 0. This is SLT which stands for set on less than, this is R type instruction. So this stands for set on less than. This is our destination that, uh, and this is a source and this is uh, another source or source two, as you, if you can uh, say that. So what, how this one works, if RS less than RT, that is as long as the value of register RS or whatever the value that we have here, uh, less than RT, then destination RD stays one. When RS becomes greater than or equal to RT, RT becomes zero. We can also have a, a, have a I type of set on less than, which is SLT I set on less than for some immediate value. It compares the uh, compares uh, the RS value with a constant. So how uh, uh, how it works? If RS less than constant, then RT equal to one. That means this one else rt becomes zero this is used uh, in this kind of scenario to generate pseudo instruction we'll see about pseudo instruction probably later branch instruction design if we notice then we'd see that we do not encounter these instructions branch on less than 
branch or greater than even we did not see branch on less than equal branch on greater than equal the reason is hardware for these instructions are slower than equal to and not equal we have seen branch equal and branch not equal but we did not see these instructions because they are uh, much slower to execute that's why we do not have direct instructions in MIPS uh, for these but it is possible to execute these in uh, this branch equal to branch not equal to uh, that means uh, less than less than equal to greater than greater than equal to it is possible to execute these instructions but these are called c2 instruction this requires a uh, longer to execute the uh, but since a uh, branch equal to branch not equal to are more common case that's why they are mips has direct instructions of branch equal to and branch not equal to this is a good design compromise signed versus unsigned operation for signed operation let, uh, let's say this is signed comparison and this will be unsigned comparison so what what do we mean by signed comparison so when we consider sign of the uh, value when we are executing the operation and in this case we do not consider the sign of the value that means we already have discussed in in uh, some of the initial slides of this lecture that the number we can consider the number as signed value or unsigned value when we consider the number as signed value then we pres then we reserve the msb bit as signed bit and when you do not consider the value as sign value then we all we consider the entire 32 bit for representing the data so when we are considering the sign comparison or or doing the sign comparison that means the msb extreme msb bit is a for reserve for sign so let's say s register holds this value so if this is the sign value then this is this this is our sign bit and this is a S1 and this is again sign bit as we can see from this two that this is positive uh, value This is actually one positive one and if, if we remember then this one represents minus one in this complicated representation this one represents uh, th This value represents minus one now if we execute SLT then T naught will hold one because S naught is this one and S0 is actually minus 1 and S1 is holding on to uh, this value which is actually 1 so minus 1 is less than plus 1 that's why T0 will hold 1 T0 will be 1 in this case where we are comparing unsigned value that means we consider the entire uh, register to represent the value so in this case this value all ones will be this if we cons if we if we represent all ones all 32 bit ones uh, and convert it into decimal value then we will get this value so this value is greater than plus 1 so in this case t naught will hold zero this is uh, so in from this slide we, we, we get to know that the operation that we can execute or the instructions that we can execute can be of two types one is signed uh, operation or instruction and other one is unsigned if we execute instruction something like this then this is signed uh, uh, instruction or signed up this will be signed instruction execution or signed operation but if we write something like this this will be unsigned and this EU with the instruction says that this is unsigned operation.